What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Check this out. We got some more information that came out. I told y'all anytime some information gonna drop, I'ma be the make I'ma make sure I'ma make sure y'all get it. So, alright. Right here, 2K came out with some interesting news. We got we gotta talk about the new details they got. We gotta talk about the mechanics. We gotta talk about the badges. We gotta talk about the jump shots. Also, Mike Way is responding to everybody on the right screen. I'm about to pop them up right here next to me. Uh, I'm gonna show y'all all the badges that we gonna have. Uh, they took out some badges. The badges they took out is Chef, Hot Zone Hunter, Lucky Seven, Mismatch Expert, which they moved that to playmaking, so they technically didn't take it out. Uh, set Shooter and Sniper and Limited Spotter. The finisher, they took out Hook Specialist. For playmaking, they took out Bullet Passer, Downhill, Glue Head, Stop and Go. And then for defense, they took out defensive leader. I didn't use that. I don't know too many people that did use that, but you know, it is what it is. So look at the screen. Uh, you'll see every badge that they got, that they're showing us so far. These not all the badges. I've been trying to tell everybody, there's no way they took all the badges away and just gave us this right now. These are the badges they want us to see. These are the new badges that's coming out and that they redoing and, and twisting around. There's 16 badges per attribute category. Eight in tier one, four in tier two, four in tier three. The reason why they're going to tiers is because they realized that a lot of players started gravitating to the same badges and they became a little overpowered. So this new tier system is supposed to break that down. So tier one badges are the least powerful for your players, but cost the least of the badges. As, as the higher tiers you go up, the more cost it would be. So, the basic idea is that you'll need to equip a certain number of badges in the lower tiers before you can equip the uh, badges to the highest. The motive behind this change was to encourage players to make some tough choices when creating their badges recipes, make loadouts more valuable as a feature, and bring a better overall balance to the badge game in general. So, along with the tiers, they're going to be giving us core badges. They give us four unique badges in each slot. Uh, so, they won't count as any point badges, so you'll still get your points. So, they're not going to count. They're just going to give them to you. Each badge will have a challenge requirement that once met will allow the badge to be placed into a core badge slot. We also made several changes to the badges themselves, which are highlighted. All right, y'all. Team Takeover. There's redesign. This right here... I think they should have came out with this a while ago when they first came out with Team Take, but they got it right, right. You know, this is this is the correct way you should do it. So he says, takeovers are special abilities you can equip on your mob player that can activate after building up your takeover meters. Basically, like getting hot in real life. While the primary and secondary takeovers remain the same, Team Takeover has to be redesigned. So check this out. In the last couple of versions, a player would activate Team Taker for the entire team and make everybody hot after filling up the primary, secondary, and then Team Takeover meters in sequential order. For NBA 2K23, Team Takeover works as a cooperative team system with the entire team sharing a single meter. Each player on the team has an equal portion that they are responsible for filling up by performing well on the court and being teammates. Once each player has filled up the portion of the meter, Team Takeover automatically fires off for the entire team. The new design makes a lot more sense and does a better job representing what it means to be hot as a team and to take over the game as a unit. This right here is a big step, simply because I'm tired of playing people with little Jimmy over there sitting in the corner, he ain't got nothing but two points, one steal. And then you got, wanna be Kobe Bryant, got 40 points. Or wanna be Shaquille O'Neal, got 15 blocks, 30 rebounds, and 20, 20 dunks. And now he gets team takeover for everybody. So now little Jimmy don't got two points at the end of takeover. Little Jimmy got about 25. <laughs> little Jimmy got 25 because want to be Shaq or Kobe out there helping him out. So team takeover, the redesign of it is a big step, man. That is, it's, it's a huge step. I can't wait to see it. I know it's going to be a lot of argument going on. I don't know if they're going to show who's the reason why the team takeover went back down. But... This is big, y'all. This is real big. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to get my hands on it because I know me and my boys, we're going to be arguing about, yo, you just messed up the team taking. We was right there. So right here, we have the adrenaline boost. Another new feature prevents over-dribbling in the concept of adrenaline boost. 
There are three available boosts per player per possession shown as the three small bars under the stamina meter. So let's check out this video, y'all, and we'll get back to it. Boosts are consumed every time you perform a hard go or explosive sprint launch. Once your three boosts are gone, you will notice that your speed and acceleration decreases significantly for the remainder of the possession. As with dribble combos, it's important to play smart and be efficient with your movement rather than zigzag back and forth aimlessly trying to get around the defense. So basically, as y'all saw, he was getting tired. Now, he didn't use his three boosts he had, but he was dribbling so much that you saw it wasn't really coming back up so quick like it normally did in the past. But, like I was watching Bass Plug and he said he went back uh, to go check to play with Lonzo Ball on 2K22 and Broden had the badges to kind of not let his stamina go all the way down. So I'm gonna see how they gonna do that when people start putting their badges on and stuff like that. But it looks like they trying to stop all that left right cheese that people doing. All that dribble 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 with Five seconds left and they hit a jump shot in your face. That looks like that won't be happening no more, no time soon. So, more authentic shooting. So, that all of, you know, every year 2K talks about how, you know, oh, we, we upgraded the shooting this time. We, we balanced it out. We did this. We did that. So, we're going to see what they what they got to say. First major change is, a, is the addition of shooting attributes. Since the inception of signature jump shots in 2K basketball, animations have been more or less authentic but functionally the same this year each signature jump shot has its unique shooting stats that helps determine its effectiveness <laughs> shot speed release height defensive immunity timing impact now i was trying to figure out what this defensive immunity means before i read this and now that i'm looking at it now i've got a better understanding it means how effective the shot is against defensive contents. Shot meters and feedback, they've been trying to work on that. We're not going to really get into that. But they do have five new shot meters that they got that's going to come within the game. And then you get to earn 15 more, I want to say, through season pass. So that's one. I think this is two right here. A little bit different. See, he greened it. That green effect came later. Then you got three. He greened it again. I like that one. That one look pretty cool for me. And then you got the bottom one. So, you know, those are the, those are the five jump shot meters that come with the game. But you do get 15 more jump shot meters that you get to earn, I think, through the season pass. I'm not for sure. So, defensive gameplay. Defense remains a huge priority for the gameplay team. We know all the offense upgrades in the world don't make fun for the game if there are no counters to stop them. So, let's talk about the great enhancements on the other end of the floor. So, the shot defense received a nice overhaul for 2K23. Um, last year, they said they used a simple shot defensive calculations that look at two specific points, the location of the defender, and the shot started, and the proximity to the ball at the release. It worked well, but it also had its shortcomings. If the defender hand or arm moves slightly into a bad position, Right at the point of our shot release calculation, you can get a bad coverage score, even though it looked like a very contest, a good contest. This year, we've created a system that evaluates the defensive player's contesting hand throughout the window of the shooting motion. This larger sample sets prove way more accurate results and helps line up the coverage numbers to what players expect based on what they see happening on the screen. <laughs> So basically, bro, a lot of these contests, we think we got our hands up, we really don't. I mean, we do, but in their eyes, we really didn't. Or, you know, maybe we should have moved over a little bit to the left, or maybe we should have moved over a little bit to the right. I don't know, but it's glad to see that they fixed. So, on-ball defense. For the floor of the game, on-ball defense movement and body ups receive a major refresh with content that more accurately depicts today's one-on-one -on -one player interactions. You'll notice a new indicator on the ball handler when a guard guarding position. This is a new defensive shading mechanic. There are three bars on the indicator representing three zones. 
Straight up, shade left, shade right. The zone the defenders is in, shown in red. If the ball handler attempts to attack a red lane, they'll get cut off. Lose their dribble or fumble the ball. So, you know, they they, they they trying to help us out a little bit more on defense, on ball defense at that, because all that sliding we be doing ain't necessary. Shot blocking, man, that was a big deal last year because everybody's dunk was getting blocked by 5'10 point guards, uh, your layups, everybody's doing LeBron blocks off the backboard, man. It was it was so crazy, it was ridiculous, man, how how bad it was getting blocked. I was just scared to go up just for a regular two-hand dunk because I don't know if somebody gonna block it. But they said shot blocking has been refined quite a bit this year as well. With NBA 2K22, we made a huge effort to improve block targeting and give players the ability to deter any shot that comes into the paint. For NBA 2K23, blocks have been tuned to a more realistic level, leading to much more predictable outcomes with the right players making appropriate stops when timing their blocks attempts as well. No more small guards pulling off LeBron James level chase down blocks like last year. You'll also notice a distinct improvement in ball security for good dunkers. Like I just said, man, no six foot guard should be running down the court blocking like LeBron James. How many guards you know in the NBA can do that? I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> Pass, it was always risky trying to pull off tomahawks and back scratches with defenders even remotely nearby. So I guess that means in the facility, like in the area that you're in, like, you know, close by. We've been, we've made some changes to encourage good dunkers to use a greater repertoire of dunk packages. Feel the reward of highlighted real dunks with significant takeover boosts in the right situations without fear of always getting the ball knocked out on the way up. The shot blocking system also now contains flyby blocks. When closing out late on perimeter shooters, the flybys will do a better job trying to get a hand up while preventing defenders from slamming into the shooter and sending them to the line. That was a big thing because you couldn't jump. And when you jump, you know, and that caused a lot of people to lose a lot of games in rec, play now, pro am. Um, you press triangle and you jump in at the person just to try to get a contest because you know holding R3, pushing R3 up don't work. You know what I'm saying? So now that's good that they kind of did that because you know people do it in the NBA. They jump, but they jump to the side, but they still put their hand up while they shoot. So now I'm willing, I'm willing to see how that's gonna turn out. Most obvious upgrade is the addition of new gesture combos to the pro stick. Internally, we refer to the new mechanics as double throws, flicking the pro stick in the direction, letting it go back to the center, and then quickly moving it, the pro stick back in the same direction, and switchbacks, flicking the pro stick in the direction, letting it go to the center, and then quickly moving the pro stick in the other opposite direction. These new gestures introduce a lot of new weapons for both shooting and ball handling. So here it is, y'all see the flex on the on the rim. They showing you how to dunk and stuff like that. So you hold it up, it's two hand, right is strong hand, left is weak hand, down is rim, hang. Up up is flashy two hand, down up is flashy one hand, up down is normal skill dunk with the meter, and then rim hang, skill dunk with the meter, which is down down. So I'm assuming that the only two, t only times you'll have a, a meter is with the alley oops, of course, and then the up down, which is a normal skill dunk, and then the down down, which is a rim hang. So apparently they putting rim hangs in the game. Now, if you want to get a tech, that's on you. Go ahead and get a tech, man. I'm not getting no techs. I'm just gonna do a two hand dunk. I may do a, I may do a, a flashy one hand or a flashy two hand, but I ain't about to do no rim hangs. I ain't trying to get no tech. All right, y'all, but with that being said, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope I gave y'all all the information that you could get out of this video. Uh, we will be uploading some more videos uh, soon to come. Uh, this is just the first of many. Like I said, it is August. We will be getting a lot of information. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell when the videos do drop. And I'll see y'all when I see y'all. I'm out.